Welcome to the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teaching you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. See, we're talking about the power of the spoken word. Ten times, well, six times in Genesis, it says God said and God saw. Well, it says ten times that God said, and every day God said and God saw. And this is the point that we should never forget. If God said so he could see, if we ever going to see it in our spirit, if it's ever going to get on the inside of us, we're going to have to say it. Say what the Word says. Now, I'm not talking about saying things you have no Scripture for. It's like someone said one time, they said, well, uh, would you, would you uh, uh, agree with me on this? And Well, what Scripture are you standing on? Well, nothing in particular. I said, well, that's what you're going to get, nothing in particular. <laughs> no, you've got you to have the Word for it. See, the power is in the Word. It's not just the saying it that causes it to happen. It has to have Word behind it. We're talking about the power of the spoken Word. Now, when you get over into uh, Hebrews, the, the uh, 11th chapter, we're all familiar with this, but, but let's look at it again. Because uh, so many times uh, it becomes old hat, so to speak, and we just kind of hold on. Well, we're going back to that verse again. Well, let's look at it. Hebrews 11, 1. Now, faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the substance of things. One translation said, faith is giving substance to things hoped for. What is it we hope for? We hope for what God has given us in His Word. Second Corinthians chapter 1, the Apostle Paul said, all the promises of God are yes and amen. God's already said yes to them before you ever ask Him. He's already given it to you. Second Peter chapter 1 says, God hath given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. And how did he do it? Through the exceeding great and precious promises that by these exceeding great and precious promises you might be partakers of the divine nature. Notice it didn't say you would be. It said you might be. Depends on whether you act on it or not. Whether you give voice to the promise of God or not. Because that's where faith comes from. Remember Paul said in Romans 10, 17, So then faith cometh by hearing the Word of God. Faith in God comes by hearing the Word of God. The opposite end of that truth is faith in the devil comes by hearing the words of the devil. Now this is why it's so important to not go around talking what you think the devil said. Most of the time it wasn't what the devil said anyway. It was, he may have influenced your, influenced your carnal mind, but most of the time it's your carnal mind rising up against some things. And the way to overcome that is get the Word of God in your mouth and renew your mind to the Word of God. Paul said in Romans, the, the 12th chapter, to not be conformed to the world, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. He says, God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Not a measure, the measure. You ever, you ever stop to ask yourself, how do you measure faith? How would you go about measuring faith? Here's all the faith there is right here. That's all the Bible faith there is. Watch this, this book. The way you'd measure how much faith you have is how much word do you have in you. That's the way you measure faith. Now, God has dealt to every man the full measure of faith. That's it right there. Now, how much of that word abides in you? That's how much faith you have. If none of this word abides in you, you don't have any faith. Sometimes people say, well, they didn't have enough faith. That was only the symptom. The problem was they didn't have the Word abiding in them. It's not enough to know what the Word said. You have to get that Word on the inside of you. You can know about the Word, rejoice about the Word, and just bomb out in every, every situation of life. You have to have that Word abiding in you. 
that means that you don't go around saying, well, I know the Bible says that, but now here's what happened to me. When you hear people say that, they've located themselves. They've cast out the Word because of some experience. Now, Jesus tells you about that in the parable of the sower. He said, if you sow among thorns, the thorns will spring up and choke it. If you sow on rocks, it'll spring up immediately. But it has no depth of earth and has no root, and when the sun's up, it's scorched and it withers away. So first thing you all do is, is gather up the thorns, <laughs> pull the thorns up. And uh, being a farmer, I, I found out that if you sow on soil, and the seed is very shallow, even rocky soil. In fact, not just a few weeks ago, I, I was planting some soybeans for a deer food plot, and, uh, and it, it was hilly and rocky, and, and I spilled some seed on rocks, just, just gravel, rock. And uh, about a week later, I was there, and it rained a time or two, and, and, and man, in, in two days, those things were up and growing right on top of that rock. But what happens when the sun gets up and gets hot? There's no depth of root, and they die, wither away. See, no depth. So, so that's why we need to get the depth of the Word, get it on the inside of us. How do you do that? Word is nice in your mouth, and it's in your heart. The more you say it, the more you believe it, the more you believe it, the more you'll say it. The more you say it, the more you'll believe it, the more you believe it, the more you'll say it. It's the confession of the Word that renews your mind and gets you to thinking like God thinks about it. Now you look at the Scripture, it says, Give and it shall be given unto you. And then you look at your finances and maybe you decided to give more. And probably what happens at first is something bad happens and it gets worse. That's what Jesus tells you in the parable of the sower. He says, Satan comes to steal the Word. That's his only hope is to get that Word out of you before you get it to working because if you ever find out it works, they're never going to get the Word out of you. But when, when the enemy hears somebody say, well, I know the Bible says that, but here's what happened to me, he knows he's got them. The Word is nigh you, it's in your mouth and in your heart. <clears throat> Faith is a substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen, it's not the evidence of things you can see. Through faith, verse 3, it says, Through faith we understand the worlds were framed by the Word of God, so that things which are seen are not made of things which do appear. Now, that means that God did not make the world out of something that you could see. It was faith-filled words spoken that created the universe. God said and God saw. God said and God saw. He framed the world with His words, with Jesus, the Word. Jesus was the personification of God's Word. Now, whether you realize it or not, you're framing your world daily with your words. Because what you say and continue to say is what you're going to believe and act on. It's your motivation, because what you say gets in your heart. Man's heart directs his ways. As, uh, when you get the Word in your heart, it, it motivates you in that direction. You always gravitate toward what you talk about the most. And if you're talking what the devil said or the bad things that's happened to you, this is why it's important that we don't talk the problems, talk the situations and circumstances that we're facing, because the more you talk it, the more you'll believe in it. And let's go a little further with that. If you pray the problem, your prayers will destroy your faith. I'm going to say that again, because some folks think that's blasphemous. You can destroy your faith by wrong praying. Lord, I've prayed, but it's not working out. Things are getting worse. Now, how did I know that? I prayed that prayer one time. 
<laughs> and the Lord, that's when the Lord said to me, <laughs> well, here's what he said. He said, what are you doing? It insulted me, you know. I, I thought he ought to know I'm praying. <laughs> I said, Lord, I'm praying. He said, no, you're complaining. And I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't come to me telling me what the devil said and calling it prayer. Boy, you talk about, and that's when he said, you've been so spiritually ignorant, I couldn't talk to you intelligently or so spiritually illiterate. And he said, you need to, you need to see what my word said, say what my word said in the face of all contradictory evidence. Because, see, we're instigating the law of change. The law of faith is the law of change. If God said and God saw, if you'll say long enough, you'll see. Because you're created in the image of God, in His likeness. We are a spirit, we have a soul, we live in a body. In uh, Romans, the first chapter, the Apostle Paul said, the invisible things of God from the creation of the world, now listen to this, are clearly seen... Now, isn't that a paradox? The invisible things from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by things that are made. Well, what did God make? He made the earth, he created the earth, he made man in his image and in his likeness. So God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, three in one. Man is a spirit, he has a soul, he lives in a body. Everything that is made reveals spiritual things in, a, in a, one sense or another. That's just the way God works. Thermostat on that wall back there controls the heat and the cool of this building, but it can't do it unless it's hooked to the heart of the unit. That thermostat's a goal setter. You set it to 70 degrees, and when it's 40 degrees in here, you've created a problem for the heart of the unit, but it knows how to fix it. Won't cook your food, it won't wash your clothes. Wasn't designed to do that. But if you set that thermostat on 70 and leave it there, it will send an impulse out there to the heart of that unit and said, get us some, some uh, warm air in here, we're cold. That unit can't say, no, nah, we think you need... The yeah, the, the air condition, we're going to crank up. No, it can't do that. Because once you dial in that gold setter, it controls that. Your head, your mouth is the gold setter. What you're saying sends an impulse down here to the heart of the unit and says, find a way to cause that to come fast. And while you're asleep, day and night, day or night, whether you're sleeping in the day or night or whether you're doing whatever, the human spirit is searching the avenues of God's wisdom to find a way to cause to come fast what you're saying. Now, God is not going to cause something to happen that's detrimental to you, but your words can cause it to come to pass. Good, bad, or indifferent. Now, we said this in some of the other service, bear out here fits good because being a farmer for 30 years or 29 years before I went into the ministry, I found out that the seed has dominion over the soil. Soil never has dominion over the seed. The seed you plant, the soil has no choice but to produce it. Now the parable of the sower, Jesus refers to the heart of man as soil. That tells you something. This is God's M.O. The seed that's planted determines what will be raised, whether it's right or whether it's wrong. Somebody slipped up. See, I have a Christian farm. I dedicated to the Lord. I, when I was uh, farming, I used to spray my uh, uh, cotton with Malachi 311. <laughs> my cotton will not uh, cast its fruit before the season on the ground, you know. I'd confess the word over it. But you see, what if somebody went out on my farm at night in the backside and, and planted marijuana out there. Now, it's a good Christian farm. You reckon they say, no, we're not raising marijuana. We're a good Christian farm. It has no choice. It has no choice of the matter. The seed has dominion over the soil. 
Whether you say in what is right or whether you say in what is wrong, you're planting seeds. God framed the world with His words. You're framing your world with your words daily. And I know there's people that think, oh, he's just, he's just extreme. Yes, I'm extremely cautious about the words I speak because I've learned the power of words. And if you will, if you will follow Jesus' teaching on this, It'll change your life forever. So here he says, he framed the world with his words. Now, now this, this verse 1 says, through faith we understand, uh, I mean, now faith is a substance of things hoped for. The word substance there. Go to Hebrews 1. In Hebrews 1 we find... Let's read the first three verses. God, who in sundry times, divers manners, spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Now notice, he made the worlds, how? Through his Son. Who's his Son? The Word, Jesus. Jesus and the Word are one. You'll notice the Apostle Paul in one or two occasions says the faith of Jesus Christ. Why did he call the faith of Jesus Christ? Because Jesus is the Word, and that's where faith comes from. It's from the Word. It's resonant in the Word. It's resonant in this Word, but it won't work in this book form. It has to get on the inside of you. That's why he said it's in your mouth and in your heart. The power of the spoken Word to bring things into being. Now he says, who being the brightness of his glory, now listen to this very closely, talk about Jesus, being the brightness of God's glory and express image of his person, express image of his person. What is an expressed image? How would you express an image you have inside you with words? That's the way you express images, with words. Words create images. Jesus was the, is the express image of God's substance. The word person here is the same Greek word translated substance in Hebrews 11.1. 1. Very same word. So Jesus is the exact expression of God's substance. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. This is where we get our faith roots. They're one. God and the Word are one. Jesus was the Word of God. Now, He was separated when He came to the earth. He took on a human form. He didn't come here as God. He came here as the Son of God, operated as a human being, why didn't he heal the sick before he was 30 years of age? Because he couldn't. He's operating as a man. The Apostle Paul calls him the man, Jesus Christ. When he was baptized in the River Jordan at age 30, he had never healed a single person, never cast out one demon. Why? Because he couldn't. He was operating as a man. Why did he have to be born as a man with a physical flesh, blood, and bone body on this planet to have authority here? Only people that are born here have authority on this planet. In John 10, it says, He that entereth by the door, and the sheep entereth not by the door, and the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. The door into the sheepfold, which is the earth, is to be born here. That's the legal entry into the earth. Satan wasn't born here. He's a created being. He's an illegal alien to this planet. He has no authority on this planet, only what he can usurp from some body. He didn't even have a body when he showed up in the Garden of Eden. He had to usurp the authority of a serpent and get his body to manifest himself. You're the one that has the body. It gives you authority on this planet. You don't know anything else to do. The devil comes around your house stirring up trouble. Get your birth certificate out and read it to him. 
born January 4, 1934, in Brummett, Arkansas. Now, where's yours? He doesn't have one. And when he finds out you know you have authority and he doesn't have any, he'll leave your house, gather up his belongings, and go down to somebody else's house. <coughs> the express image of his person. You express an image with words. <clears throat> Jesus was the Word of God personified. So faith is the personification of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. Now, in a court of law, if you have evidence, it has to exist if you have evidence. So in the realm of the Spirit, whatever you can believe based on the authority of the Word of God exists in the realm of the Spirit or you could not have evidence for it. You have a title to your car. If somebody steals your car, it's still your car, you're the legal owner of that car. It's no less your car than it was when it's sitting in your driveway. You just don't have possession of it. But when they find it, it comes back to you because you have the title deed. Faith is the title deed. If you can find it in the Word of God, confess it until faith fills your heart, you can have what the Word promised. But now here's, here's where the problem comes in. So many times people say, well, now if it happened to Brother so-and-so, if God did it for him, he'll do it for me. Well, now wait a minute. Do you know what Brother so-and-so know, knew? Did you do what Brother so-and-so did? Did you have the Word in your heart like Brother so-and-so did? All that enters into the equation. See, you may know about the Word, but you may not have it in you. It does not abide in you. So there's a lot of, a lot of things that, that people haven't understood. For instance, Jesus said in Matthew 12 that a good man out of the good deposit of his heart, he brings forth good things. Evil man out of the evil treasure or deposit of his heart, he brings forth evil things. For, now listen, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Now this tells you that it doesn't come by just saying it. It has to be abundantly in the heart to bring it forth. And whatever's abundantly in your heart will always get in your mouth. So check up on what you have abundantly in your heart. Many years ago, I was farming. I had a fellow working for me for a few days. And, and we were driving down the turn road. He was in a in pickup, and he was in a big way of telling me some big story. And he brought out a big curse word, and, and he happened to realize that I was a minister. He threw his hand over his mouth. Oh, he said, I, excuse me, I don't talk that way. <laughs> what is in his heart got in his mouth. See? See, what is in your heart in abundance? Now, so many times people start confessing the Word. They confess it a few days, and then they give up because nothing happened. The first stage of confessing the Word of God is doing very little to change the situation. First thing it'll do is renew your mind to the Word of God. It will cause faith to come, but it has to be in your heart in abundance before you can speak words that change things. Now, the first thing your words are doing is changing you and renewing your mind. Renews your mind, gets you to thinking like God thinks. And I challenge you to just write down the scriptures that uh, would produce the faith that you, whatever you're believing for, Confess it daily aloud. I mean, uh, get by yourself and just speak it out loud daily, over and over and over and over. Thank God for it. It'll get on the inside of you. And before long, you'll have the feeling, hey, it's mine. It's mine. And that's really what Mark eleven twenty three 23 said. Who serves shall say, believe, doubt not in his heart, believe what he's saying will come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. The Greek says it different from that. It says, believe that he has received, past tense, when he prayed. Well, when he prayed or said, either way. Believe the original 
Greek says, you've got it. You've laid hold on it. You've got it. You know, Jesus said, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked and takes away that which was sown in his heart. That's why it's important that we have teaching and study the Word of God to understand it. Because if you don't understand why you're doing certain things, somebody will talk you out of it, and it won't necessarily be the devil, maybe some well-meaning Christian. Now, our offer today is offer number, uh, it's offer number 2240. It's called The Substance of Things, two audio cassettes in an album for $12 plus $4 postage and handling. And on this two-tape series, we, we talk about the fact that faith, of course, is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. And we know that it's through faith we enter into the promises of God. And Paul said, the word is in your mouth and in your heart, the substance of things. A Polaroid camera is the film is so sensitive to whatever you expose it to and it imprints that image on the film. The human spirit is the same way. If you imprint the Word of God on the human spirit, you will live out the reality of it. So that's why the, it's important, Paul said, uh, renew your mind to the Word of God. Don't be conformed to the world. Renew your mind to the Word of God. We give you examples and illustrations of how in this two-tape series that the substance is given to things because we have that image on the inside of us. Uh, the invisible things from, of Him from the creation world are clearly seen being understood by things that are made, the substance of things. I think you'll find this a very informative series, be a blessing to you. That's offer number 2240, the substance of things for $12 plus $4 postage and handling. It's two audio cassettes. Uh, we have a toll-free order line. It's 1-877-396-9400. 1-877-396-9400. Until next time, this is Charles Capps reminding you that the enemy is defeated, God is exalted, and yes, Jesus is coming soon. Are you ready? Ready or not, Jesus is coming, and He's coming very soon. To order a copy of today's show or any product offered on this program, call 1-877-396-9400 or visit our website at caps.tv where you can order downloads of our MP3 teachings, eBooks, and watch other programs on demand. This broadcast has been sponsored by Caps Ministries and is dedicated to helping you put the Word of God to work in the everyday circumstances of your life.